I predict that Apple's focus on privacy will go down as one of the single best marketing moves in tech history. The issues around privacy aren't going anywhere. They're gonna to continue to get bigger and bigger over time. And Apple is uniquely positioned as the brand that is taking these concerns very seriously. Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's talk about Apple and their focus on privacy. Over the last few years, they've taken on the FBI when it comes to encryption. They've taken on ad companies like Facebook and Google when it comes to tracking users. And just in general, they've taken a leadership role in the industry when it comes to protecting user privacy. And all of this, of course, has been very beneficial to consumers. But what we're gonna focus on here is the business impact. Specifically, why Apple's focus on privacy is such a brilliant long-term strategy. And as part of that, what we can do with our own businesses to emulate their strategy to craft our own long-term game plan for separating our businesses from the competition so we can stand out in the marketplace. So in this episode, I'm gonna cover a simple three-step process that we can follow it's not necessarily a scientific process, but the idea here is these are the kinds of things that we wanna focus on when crafting our own long-term strategy. So with that in mind, let's get started with step number one. Pay attention to emerging customer needs. In business, it's always important to be on the lookout for shifting customer needs, new priorities, new preferences, or even just emerging and growing concerns that customers might have, and this might seem Obvious on the surface, every business knows it's very important to pay attention to customers and their preferences. But what I'm talking about here are more long-term trends, the kinds of things that are starting to bubble to the surface today that are likely to have an even greater impact in the future. Shifts in terms of how customers prioritize features or concerns or other aspects of whatever it is that you sell that are likely to have a greater impact in the future. So let me give you a few examples of these from the mainstream market today. Things like a growing annoyance over invasive or disruptive ads. Of course, companies like Facebook and Google build their businesses on advertising and making these ads more and more targeted. But there's this growing sentiment out in the marketplace where people both don't like the personalization of some of these ads, and perhaps more important than that, people are starting to shift away from advertising in general. They're attracted to services like Netflix and even things like YouTube Premium where they can drop the ads in favor of paying some kind of a subscription service. So this is a growing trend and it's likely to increase in the future as we just look at the past and how prevalent ads used to be and how the things are starting to shift in the future. Another example would be concerns over global warming, air pollution, and these kinds of things. And of course, this is nothing new, but if we look at history, this is a growing concern. It's starting to affect more and more purchasing decisions. And this isn't likely to go any away anytime soon. If anything, it's almost certain that this kind of concern and this sentiment is gonna grow over time. And that's kind of the common thing that we're looking for here. I'll give you one more example, and this is probably most appropriate to what we're covering here in this episode, and that is fears around tech privacy and security. So over the past few decades, this has slowly been growing in popularity. And I'd say more recently, this is really starting to become a major issue, especially with things like Edward Snowden's revelations and people realizing that the devices they're carrying have cameras, microphones, they're starting to carry these everywhere. More and more of these devices are starting to become highly personal, whether it's a device like an Apple Watch or in the future, things like AR glasses or even just devices that we have in our homes that more and more are internet connected and have either microphones or cameras or these kinds of things. And of course, this is a growing concern that people have regarding privacy. So the key idea here is to identify things that aren't just important today, but things that are likely to become even more important in the future. Trends that are likely to become a bigger deal, not a smaller deal over time. Now, the key here, the goal at the end of the day is to identify these kinds of trends so that as a business or as a brand, you can show leadership when it comes to communicating to customers that you're taking this as seriously as they are and that you see your brand or your business being perfectly positioned to resolve this issue for them in the future. And again, this is extremely valuable because these issues are only gonna become a bigger deal in the future. So for example, Tesla would be a perfect example. They're 
pretty much the only auto company that is taking the issue regarding renewable energy extremely seriously. So other companies have obviously dabbled with electric cars, but Tesla has made it absolutely clear, and their founder, Elon Musk, that their mission is to move the world over to renewable energy and away from things like gasoline-powered automobiles. So they've demonstrated clear leadership in an area that has been important to people for a number of years already. You could argue, you know, two or three decades at this point. And so perfect example of a company going out on a limb and saying, this issue, it's time we finally address it. We're gonna build our entire business around this premise and this is a priority to us. And to a lesser degree, I would say Apple and their concern with privacy is similarly positioning Apple for an interesting future because again, these devices that Apple and other companies make are becoming more and more personal. They're things that we carry everywhere. They have microphones, they have cameras and Apple is standing up and saying, we really care about personal privacy. We're gonna push back with the FBI when it comes to encryption. We're gonna make this a priority. We're gonna make it harder for companies to track your personal data. They're standing up and saying, we are the business, we are the brand that is gonna take this growing concern seriously. Now, the best case scenario here, as far as the business is concerned, is when you can identify a trend like this, that a competitor is actually in no position to resolve. So that takes us to step number two. Aim to create a divergent long-term strategy. It's important in business to find ways to separate yourself from the competition. You wanna avoid things like commoditization of your products or your services, and you wanna avoid things like direct head-to-head -head competition whenever possible. So when crafting your long-term strategy, you wanna look for opportunities to latch on to some of these things that we went through in step number one, these emerging trends, where it's unlikely that your competition can follow your strategy. Now, oftentimes, what this means is they're actually causing some of the issues that people are starting to get concerned about it. But in other cases, you might simply be playing into their strengths, whatever their strengths might be. So whenever you're crafting this kind of a long-term strategy, you wanna think very carefully about what are the core strengths of your business and what are the core strengths of the competition? Because behind every strength, whether it's yours or whether it's theirs, are gonna be weaknesses. Every strategy necessarily, along with strengths, has its own weaknesses. So. A perfect example of this, a very common one actually, would be if everyone in the marketplace, if all the competition is chasing the high end of the market where they're all making premium, emotion-based products and services, appealing to people's emotions, appealing to that premium mindset, well, there's often an opportunity to come in and create a purely functional product, focus on price, bring down the price, and to compete in the marketplace. Dell, with their original computer strategy, would be a pretty solid example of this. And the exact opposite is often true. If everybody's focused on nothing but price, then there's often an opportunity to come in and to target emotional appeal, create a high-end product, very similar to what Apple did with the original iMac. And they focused more on emotional appeal, less about making just a purely functional device. This kind of a thing, this is straight out of Blue Ocean Strategy by W. Chan Kim and Renee Maborn, but this is one of many, many examples of how a strength for players in the market can be turned into a weakness if you focus on what they're not accomplishing. So you wanna focus on your strengths, you wanna understand their strengths and what weaknesses that opens up. And in the case of Apple, they see that companies like Google, like Facebook, and even to a lesser degree perhaps, companies like Amazon build their businesses off of having huge amounts of customer data. They track user behavior, they gather as much data as they can, and they either sell that information directly or they sell it indirectly in the form of advertising. So both Google, Facebook, to a much lesser degree, a company like Amazon, they are their strengths are built around the kinds of things that customers are starting to become worried about. And so Apple can kind of simultaneously stand up for privacy and at the same time stand against companies like Google and Facebook. And of course, these companies are either direct competitors today, as in the case with Google and Android going up against the iPhone, and companies like Facebook and Amazon, not only today, but much more into the future. So for example, Facebook is starting to get into some home hardware. I, I believe they're getting into some basic voice communication devices and things like that. And then you, of course you have Amazon Alexa moving into the smart speaker and smart assistant space. And so Apple is gonna be head to head with these companies. And of course, Facebook with Oculus is gonna very much be up against Apple if and when 
Apple releases their long-rumored augmented reality glasses. And so there's this very unique opportunity where whenever you're crafting your long-term strategy, look for things where your competition literally cannot follow what you're doing because it plays against their strengths. They'd be giving up the most unique aspect of their business if they were trying to follow exactly what you're doing. This way you can create divergence that is unlikely to be emulated by your current competition. Now, one of the bigger challenges that comes up when you're putting together this kind of a long-term strategy is in communicating it effectively. Because often there's a lot of nuance, there's a lot of things going on in terms of what exactly differentiates you from the competition. And that takes us to step number three. Identify a concise way to convey your message. When it comes to positioning the difference between your brand and another brand within the minds of customers, it's really important to find a very, very simple way to communicate what that difference is. So in the case of Apple, they might believe in all kinds of things that they don't think companies like Google, Facebook, or even Amazon agree with. So for example, personal privacy is gonna be a part of that, perhaps to a lesser degree, something like encryption, because I feel like Google and Facebook and some of these other companies do in fact agree with the general stance of encryption. Some of it's gonna come down to government overreach and things like that. So it's a very complicated idea that Apple might be standing for, but they, Bring it all together with a single word, privacy. Apple is for privacy. And so this is a really, really important thing to keep in mind whenever you're crafting your long-term strategy. You wanna find either a very short and concise phrase or ideally a single word that helps separate you from the competition. So a great example, a more dated example of this would be Volvo. When automobiles were first kind of really taking off I'm thinking somewhere in the ballpark of four to seven decades ago, roughly speaking, there was this underlying feeling like, on the one hand, automobiles are amazing, they unlock so much freedom, very empowering, but there was this growing undertone that if you were to get in a car accident, it could be literally a life or death situation. Many people weren't wearing their seatbelts, even if they were wearing their seatbelts, many of the original vehicles were in some ways death traps on wheels. I'm thinking of the Ford Pinto and some of those vehicles where quite literally, if you got in a relatively minor fender bender, you were done. Like it's just that simple. And so there was this growing concern out there that, well, it's certainly great to have vehicles and you wanna keep buying vehicles. You wanna have the freedom associated with having an automobile. There was this underlying fear this growing concern that safety was the price you were paying for. Very similar to some of the concerns people have today when it comes to social media or other things. They don't wanna give it up, but they understand there are some clear downsides. And so what Volvo did was they focused on safety as their number one priority. I believe they invented the modern day three-point harness seatbelt, and I'm if I'm not mistaken, I believe they also released the patents or at least allowed other auto manufacturers to use the same technology because it was all about saving lives, which was very important to them. And so their strategy was to focus on this one concern that people had. People loved automobiles, but they focused on this idea of making it safer. And even today, especially for people that were around in that era or were growing up at that time, Volvo is still very much linked with the idea of safety. So when people prioritize that as a number one thing in their purchase decision, even today, they tend to think of a company like Volvo as the best option, which is very interesting because I think it's worth noting, this is incredibly resilient even though many vehicles today, one could argue, especially with a similar price point, a similar configuration, are gonna be almost identical in terms of safety to something like Volvo. So if you were to buy a Mercedes or a BMW or something in a similar ballpark in terms of price point, the difference in safety would be so minute. And yet even today, for a lot of people, there's this linkage. This is very similar to what we talked about in the last episode in terms of having brands link their brand name to a specific product category. And in fact, this idea comes from the same book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Reese and Jack Trout. And the idea here is you wanna link your brand to a specific word, to one word that really separates you from the pack. And as I just kind of explained, this can be incredibly resilient, not only initially when Volvo was heavily focused on this, but even decades later when products are largely interchangeable, 
there is still this sentiment that Volvo stands for safety. Perhaps an even better example would be Subway. Subway's initial marketing about 10 to 20 years ago was very much that they were the healthy alternative to fast food. So Subway aimed to own the word health. And to this day, even though in many ways the idea of eating a loaf of bread with some veggies and a little bit of protein has been largely debunked as being one of the healthiest options out there, they heavily marketed this idea and even today, when one could make a pretty strong case that their food isn't particularly healthy relative to some other options out there, many people would still link Subway as being this healthy option in the marketplace. Even though McDonald's and some other restaurants have kind of stepped up their game in the health department, you still have this association out there where people believe that Subway equals healthy. And there's this linkage there. So the point that I'm trying to make is, when it comes to communicating what separates you as a brand, you wanna keep it very short, ideally a single word, and that this linkage can be incredibly resilient, as is the case with Volvo, where even over time, you could argue competitors have largely caught up. Even with Subway, where over time, you could argue their initial claim isn't particularly accurate. And then of course, with Apple and their linkage with privacy, and I would say much more compelling, much more accurate, but again, the common thing here is that having your brand linked to a word can be incredibly resilient because it makes your message extremely digestible. So when somebody hears that this is what your brand stands for, it's very easy for them to buy into that idea, see some supporting evidence, and in the case with Subway, at the time, I would say they did have some supporting evidence relative to brands like McDonald's, but over time, they've maintained that very strong connection, even though today, unfortunately, probably isn't the strongest connection. And of course, let me just be super clear, as a brand, you wanna stand up to your word. So if you're making a claim, you should definitely stand by that and you're gonna be far ahead. I'm not trying to make the claim that you can you know, create this false linkage and run with it. It's just that powerful of a concept, but ideally, you create a linkage that you really deserve and that's gonna give it that much more power in the marketplace. So. Even though, let me just kind of wrap this up, even though Apple certainly cares about a lot more than just privacy within this context, as I mentioned earlier, government overreach might be an issue, encryption is part of the argument, protecting users from being tracked by some of these companies like Facebook and Google and others, it's a complicated issue when they run their advertising campaigns and when they really promote the difference between what it is that they offer and what it is that other companies offer, they simplify it down to a single word and that is privacy. So with all of this in mind, let's make a quick prediction about the future. I predict that Apple's focus on privacy will go down as one of the single best marketing moves in tech history. The issues around privacy aren't going anywhere. They're gonna continue to get bigger and bigger over time. And Apple is uniquely positioned as the brand that is taking these concerns very seriously. Not only have they taken a clear leadership role when it comes to protecting user privacy, but they've leveraged that leadership position to create a strong competitive advantage in the market. And in this case, it's a strong advantage that their direct competition, including Google, Facebook, and perhaps to a lesser degree, Amazon, are not really in a credible position to emulate their long-term strategy. So at the end of the day, the core takeaway from this episode is that when crafting your own long-term strategy, if at all possible, find ways to create separation between what you and your business are pursuing versus what the competition can pursue so that you can create separation, avoid commoditization, and ensure that you're focusing on creating real value and not just chasing lowest possible price. When it comes to accomplishing this, of course, you can go through the three steps that we just covered. Let me quickly recap them for you here. Number one, Pay attention to emerging customer needs. Number two, aim to create a divergent strategy. And number three, identify a concise way to convey your message. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. If you're listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link in the show notes that you can use to make your way to the video edition. That way you can participate in the comment section there as well. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to connecting with you again in a future episode.